Hi, welcome to another dumpster diving video. Yes, this is my latest score from down in the garbage room, down here in the EEV log at corporate towers. This one I did literally have to uh, jump in the dumpster for. It was right in the bottom. It looks like we've got a 27 inch um, LCD monitor. Still got some plastic and uh, stuff on it, and it was lying right at the bottom of the dumpster under a uh, Xerox um, phaser printer thing which I didn't bother getting and I thought oh I think it might be uh, busted because well they, you know the big heavy um, printer was lying on the top of this thing but I got I actually jumped in the dumpster and uh, was standing right on the bottom of it and uh, lifted this sucker out and yeah it's got a few scratches and stuff on it but uh, I think well um, it, it doesn't look like the screen has been uh, cracked at all due to the heavy weight on there so yeah uh, it's got a bit of a lean on it that's just not my that's not just my camera there's a something wrong with the uh, stand on that thing it's a bit wonky but if this thing works um brilliant or if we can just repair it if it's a bad cap well fantastic scored also another one of these samsung uh sync master 510 n's and uh little 15 inch monda great little monda i've already got five matching ones of this so I've now got six I think hang on I'll go have a look two four five yes I now got six total of these funky little monitors which I do want to do something with like uh, do like an FPGA project to uh, drive six different monitors or uh, something like that I also uh, scored this Belkin um, uh, battery backup thing it's really very heavy um, I don't know the specs of it yet haven't looked it up um, have no idea if it works but it's like got a surge protection and battery backup in there there's some batteries in there weighs maybe I don't know six seven kilos something like that so I thought I'd grab that don't know if it's any good um, but I'm gonna power up this monitor see if it works there was also a uh, Belkin 8-way uh, KVM switch with all the cables and everything. Here's a uh, photo of it. That was down there as well. Um, it didn't pick that one up. I'm not sure if it's any of any uh, use to me at all. Anyway, this is an AOC brand. Um, never heard of them. Just one of those crusty, crappy uh, brands. And uh, right, because it did come from the bottom of the dumpster, no, that's not a scratch. So, no, I'm going to have to get out the... Uh, isopropanol uh, wipes and uh, give it a wipe down a few scratches up the top here but uh, so that's where it looks like it took all of the uh, force from the laser printer by the looks of it that's uh, yeah but that's no big deal I'm quite happy with that it's still got the plastic on check it out there we go good as new <laughs> got the plastic I love it it's unbelievable what people throw out. I mean, even if this has failed, it likely is just like a power supply thing. I mean, it could be the panel, but geez, you know, um, stands a bit out, but we can fix that. But anyway, it's got uh, uh, all the requisite inputs. It's got even a USB um, hub on it. We've got DVI, VGA, HDMI, and uh, what is that? And uh, oh, that must be a display port. Um, uh, thing. So a very modern monitor. Let's have a look at the model number and check it out. Manufactured April 2012. This is by far the most modern monitor I've uh, gotten. Unbelievable. And uh, the model number is E2752VQ. Here we go. Let's power it up. Oh, 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 too good to be true, folks. Oops, yeah, look at that. That's smashed. <laughs> oh, bummer. Oh, I wonder if that was actually the uh, uh, laser printer on top of the thing. Well, that is well and truly uh, broken, folks. Um, even though there's no physical, visible physical damage to it, clearly it's had uh, impact points. Um, you know, here and here, and, and it's just absolutely, uh, uh, cra you know, shattered inside. But it's very um, artistic. I've hooked my uh, notebook up to it, but we're getting, you know, um, getting nothing at all. So possibly, I don't know, who knows? It may have been actually working when they tossed it in the uh, dumpster. You never know. I mean, people are that nuts that, they, you know, a business shuts down in the building or whatever, and they just 
they just toss everything out. So um, unfortunately, this was literally like lying on the bottom of the uh, dumpster with a laser printer on top of it, probably tossed in. So that's why we're getting our uh, impact marks out. I mean, there's no, I can't feel anything on the um, outer protective uh, uh, plastic cover on that. But yeah, clearly it's had some impact marks. And I, I rather like that. It's very artistic, don't you think? Shattered monitor art. But the little 15 inch Samsung works absolutely beautiful, as does the other five I've got. Um, they actually, they toss these out, presumably, because they're really small. I mean, they're absolutely tiny. I mean, compare this 15 inch monitor with this 15, I mean, well, you know, this is a 15 inch notebook, um, wide screen, of course. But because of the very small footprint, of this thing, they can be quite nice for little, uh, you know, uh, monitor applications. No uh, pun intended, of course. You know, like a little, just a little uh, monitor tucked away on the side, just to display your latest, uh, you know, tweets or some other uh, status thing in a multi-monitor uh, configuration, or to stick on a wall, or to use as, you know, part of a, you know, maybe a, a USB microscope camera system, or you know, something like that, because they're small and they're light. I really like them. Um, the other ones I've taken the uh, bases off, I do have them, but uh, I plan on, I was going to do like five of these in it, like side by side and do a big video panel wall. I've mentioned that before. Now I've got six of these little suckers and uh, I really like them. So please, if you've got any real interesting ideas, what I can do with six of these puppies, then uh, please leave it in the comments. Now as for this Belkin PSU, I've powered it on and uh, I get nothing, so something's obviously uh, blowing in there. It's not just the batteries, I presume, otherwise, you know, I'd expect the power to come on and, and the battery light to flash or something if there was something wrong with the batteries. And uh, on the bottom it's got the RS-232 USB, it protects your phone lines as well. Um, I, you know, I don't think it's worth much, they're probably uh, very cheap, I haven't looked up the price, but might just crack it open and let's see if it's an input fuse or uh, something like that. There it is, it's a 650VA model uh, F6H650AUUNV, Australianised of course, Belkin Australia, there we go, they're in West Gosford, oh, go figure. There you go, just a uh, large standard um, sealed lead acid battery in the thing, so if the battery uh, is at fault, uh, easily replaceable. Wow, what an unserviceable pile of turd. I'm not sure if you can see down in there. I'm going to have to manually focus down in there on that screw. Perhaps you probably can't see it, but what it is, is it's a... I am not sure of the exact name for it, but it's basically a one-way uh, flathead screw. You can tighten these things up, um, but... When you try and go in the other direction, the slot is designed so that it uh, so that your screwdriver just uh, doesn't get any any purchase on it going in the counterclockwise direction, and it just slips off. So you can't actually undo these things. You can only tighten them up. That that's just to prevent people servicing these things. Uh, why? Unbelievable! What a bastard! So if I actually get my screwdriver in there, watch this. It, if I turn it counterclockwise, it, you know, it just won't let me undo that screw. But if I turn it that way, it'll let me tighten that screw up, no worries at all. But then you go back in the other direction and... Arrgh! Bastard! Die! Well, if I measure the mains input here, there's at least something connected on that. There we go. So it's not, you know, a broken uh, plug or anything like that or, you know... Uh, broken mains cable, so there's uh, some input stuff there, but um, yeah, I mean, pfft, what do I do with it? I don't know. How much is it worth? It's probably not worth, you know, slot trying to crack the whole bloody thing open. They're probably not worth much. I'm sure, they're quite cheap. So if we take this sucker apart here, it's uh, it's really crusty. It's just the front bezel like this just snaps off, and then this is just sort of stuck in place with some tape. On the back of the boards here, it really is uh, rather, rather crusty. But uh, what do you expect from one of these? Oh, hang on, I've got a connector in the back of this. There we go. 
And ta-da, we have our panel. There we go. And that's, uh, that's all she wrote. And of course there's not much in it, just a single uh, processor board, power supply with the uh, backlight inverter on it, USB hub board over here. Oh, look at that! Some uh, RFI um, tabs on there. Wow, I'm surprised. And uh, yeah, just a few things held in place with tape. Here we go. It was like sort of um, silver backed, uh, kind of like a duct tape kind of thing, just holding that panel in place. Really quite terrible. And a little tiny uh, uh, board down the front for the uh, switches and LEDs. And that's, uh, that's all she wrote. Boring. And single side board, of course, built down to a price, but uh, it's quite a low uh, profile board because uh, you know it's just I I rather like it actually very compact look at those long radial caps look at the length of those things like two inches long incredible stuck down decent you know um it's not uh, it's not bad at all I rather like that design and classic uh, striped removal of the solder mask there on those pads in uh, those sort of patterns just to get some uh, increased current uh, handling capability on those uh, tracers because they're probably using like you know the crappiest half ounce uh, copper on a good day on this thing but really on something like this which is not high power at all I mean it's you know um, you've got to doubt whether it uh, has any uh, benefit whatsoever might have um, you know, another reason why you might uh, do this is it might have uh, some effect in terms of uh, heat uh, dissipation and stuff like that because uh, solder mask is quite an effective insulator so if you just leave uh, some of the solder mask off like that it does help with the uh, heat but once again um, you know something what does this monitor draw you know 50 60 watts or something most of that's going into the panel the efficiency of the uh, power supply is going to be quite good so eh I don't know the designer just did it because he could or she could well, if you're going to put stitching vias on a board, <laughs> go for broke. Count the number of vias, folks. Anyone who can count the exact number of vias wins a prize. <laughs> Why not? It does actually cost extra. Um, you know, in, in really high volume manufactured uh, stuff, you know, um, when you panelize these things, this one is obviously uh, V-grooved. You can tell by the really rough edge on there. So they've just uh, V-grooved these boards. And uh, there's the uh, fully routed uh, edge of the board there, and they've v-grooved it this way on, on this edge, and this one, and the top one. So it looks like they probably had a uh, panel of, um, you know, a, a panel of like uh, two boards like this, and then, you know, long ways like this. So they might have had like ten boards on one uh, panel. And of course, um, all of these holes add up. I mean, uh, some. I mean, it takes extra time to manufacture these boards with all those holes. As fast as these uh, routing, um, in, in these automated uh, CNC drilling machines are, it takes extra time. That's why a lot of PCB manufacturers will actually have a maximum number of holes per panel before they start charging you more. You know, they'll only tolerate a certain amount of uh, time used up on their uh, CNC machine in the production process. So. You know, um, adding these things on here might be kind of groovy. You might, you know, yeah, let's really put stitching, via stitching everywhere and really lower that ground plane inductance and everything else. And, well, you know, um, just be careful if you're going to do that. I mean, they've just gone berserk on this board. Absolutely berserk. Looks like they've got a uh, thermal pad on the bottom. And once again, as I said before, that's probably why... They've done it. It's probably a similar design. Well, no, it wouldn't have been a similar designer because the power supply was probably farmed out to somebody else. But, well, maybe, because it's a coincidence. They've got the, once again, the striped removal of the solder mask. So that's going to help with your heat dissipation from this pad. Ordinarily, you just leave the entire solder mask off the entire thing rather than just a small little stripe like that. So it's a bit silly, but if we flip... So there you go. That's just probably like a little uh, low dropout voltage regulator or something like that, and they've fully removed the uh, solder mask on the top there, so I don't know why they didn't uh, do that on the bottom. And uh, uh, hey, we've got some uh, s some paste which was uh, on there. They've uh, I don't know why they've uh, done that, and probably to increase the uh, thermal capacity going through, because if you do put uh, solder on there, it's a greater uh, thermal mass. You get uh, lower thermal resistance through to the uh, other the uh, pad on the other side of 
the boards. And for those who care what chipset it is, I don't. There's a package you don't see every day. Look at that. So there you have it. That's another quick uh, dumpster diving video. I'd like to say I got uh, something useful out of this, but well, all I got is another 15 inch Monda. That's not bad though, so can't really uh, complain too much, but uh, I'll just, you know, keep these boards. They might be useful for, I don't know, a soldering tutorial or repair. I don't know. Something. Anyway, I'll just go into the spare boards bin. And check out the USB hub board. It's got a proper RFI shield on top. And look at that. That actually looks like a decent quality USB hub. Look, they've gone to a lot of effort there. Once again, a lot of uh, via uh, stitching and stuff on there. But that's actually pretty good. Quite impressed with that. Um, why they've gone to the effort of double-sided double loading that, I've, you know... I, I don't know. Surely you could have fitted everything on the top. And there's the Xerox printer in the dumpster. It's a zero. It's a phaser. I don't know model something like that. And here is the uh, KVM switch, complete with all the cables and everything. It's uh, it's an OmniView PR02 eight port KVM switch. I don't know. Should I take it? already got enough bloody VGA cables and things. Yeah, you know I can't help myself. Catch you next time.